Hey guys, it's Weedup here, and welcome back to another video. Today, we are back in another command block tutorial, and we are going to be covering replace item, XP, and world border, which are all really, really great to know, especially if you are a map maker. Uh, and I will kind of go into why in just a little bit. But um, yeah, also, guys, thank you so much for all the support on the videos lately. It's actually ridiculous. I am at currently, as of recording this video, 92 subscribers. And, like, I'm gaining so many subscribers constantly. It's just honestly kind of ridiculous. But, yeah, guys, thanks for all the support lately. And also, to answer a quick question that I know some of you probably have, is I have mentioned in my last couple of videos that school is starting soon. In fact, for me, it's starting in two days from recording this video. Um, but, of course, you are all probably wondering whether or not my upload schedule will change. And it is highly unlikely that it will change because I do do... <laughs> I do work on all my videos over the weekend, meaning that... The schedule should not change at all, but uh, if it does change, of course, I will keep you guys informed over on Twitter. So follow me on Twitter at WaveJump11 if you want updates on that, and uh, yeah, alright. So anyways, yeah, today as I said, we will be covering Replace Item, XP, and World Border, and let's just jump right into it. Alright, so the first thing is Replace Item, and Replace Item is actually a pretty awesome command. That I think you will like a lot. So basically, it allows you to replace items in inventory. So for example, if I were to replace item entity, right? So you could do entities or blocks. I've explained what entities are before. You, basically, anything that moves in Minecraft. Uh, Wave jump games. So obviously myself. And I'm going to select a slot now. And you'll notice there are a lot of different slots. Let's say I select my weapon offhand. Um, so now you notice my offhand is selected, right? Weapon offhand is of course where my shield would go or whatever i uh yeah, I'll sh you'll see in a minute anyways and we can replace it with any block so let's say put a gas tier there and now you notice in my second hand i am holding a gas tier um which it's a really helpful thing to be able to do because for if you're a map maker for example you can go ahead and give a player a specific item like if you've seen uh find the button maps like sometimes people will troll it and put it here but as i talk about finding the button maps you may be wondering, and I'm going to go over block here, actually, before we do that. Um, so if I go to the block at those, co at those coordinates, so um, we are at 1, 4, 13, and we are going to go ahead and take a look at which slot it could possibly be. Now, as you could tell, there are a lot of different slots, and, you know, we could, this is something that you will have to guess around a lot with. So, for example, I could guess that slot container at 0 will probably be the first slot, and let's say that with stone, and oops. Let's do that again. And I only noticed the first sl slot and it was replaced with stone. Um, so one thing that is important to know about Minecraft is that uh, zero is basically your first slot. So basically the way this works is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then here you'll have eight. And so zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the reason that is, is because in coding, it's how, in programming, it's how it works. Um, but it's not something super important to know, is uh, unless you're going to be using replace item a lot, and you're going to be replacing things in a very specific slot. For example, if I were to set my hotbar slot, so if I were to go replace item player, wave jump, um, some entity uh, at a slot dot hotbar dot nine is not existent. If I try and do slot dot hotbar dot nine, You'll notice it says it is not a valid parameter, so I have to do slot .hotbar eight in order to replace my last slot. Um, because as you know, they as you should probably know, there are eight hotbar slots. All right, so next thing we are going to go into is a nice little way to make it so that you could only place things on on certain locations. Uh, and you may have seen this in maps before, where for example, you'll get an item and you can't. Oops, <laughs> that's a problem. And I don't have my compass on me. Good job, me. But you'll have it where you have an item. And the item can only be placed on a specific block. So you notice right here, I can't place this uh, on the quartz, but I can place it on the prismarine. Um, and also, you will see that you could only break certain blocks with other blocks if you're in adventure mode. And you'll see this in a lot of different maps. Um, you'll notice, because I broke this one now, I can no longer do anything with it. But we're going to now take a look at the command that we use to go ahead and give ourselves that item. So if we head into here... You'll notice we're placing item entity at P, right? So again, nearest player who is an entity. Slot dot hotbar dot two. Again, third slot in the hotbar. Uh, we are placing it with a skull one three. So this is something that I didn't actually know 
uh, until recently, which is that when you are giving yourself a player head, you have to do skull, and then you have to do, if you want it to just be one, use one, but then that third one right here, that third number right here, three means that it's a player head. You know, you might have the skeleton head or a zombie head or whatever if you do numbers less than that, but you have to have it as three if you want to be able to uh, include a skull owner. So, as you can tell here, now we have kind of a, a data tag, which if you watch my entity data or block data videos, you'll kind of know what these are. And you could see here, I set the skull owner to wave, and we haven't really, or to wave jump games, and we haven't really gone over exactly how skull owner, and, or not how skull owner, how like item tags work, but they're very, very simple. So yeah, we have skull owner to wave jump games, which is very, very simple. It basically just means that I own that head or that the head uh, came from my skin. Um, and actually, for the next, uh, I'm going to replace it with Notch to show you that after this, that you could do it with any player. Um, and then I could place it on Prismarine. So what this is, it's can place on, so can place it on. But I couldn't just do quote Minecraft Prismarine. I have to add these brackets. And you don't have to have Minecraft, I just added Minecraft for completeness' sake. Um, but these brackets mean that you could, uh, if you have these brackets, you could actually specify multiple items. So... If I wanted you to also be able to place it on quartz, for example, I would just have to do um, comma quote quartz. And I don't know if it's quartz block or just quartz. Let me actually check right now. Um, it is quartz block, so I'll fix that right there. Um, but yeah, it's what's called an array. and basically means that you just have multiple items in it, but you need to have the square brackets or it won't work. And can destroy works exactly the same way. You just have the tag, colon, and then an array. Um, and yeah, so now you'll notice here, because I've edited that, when I do this, I should get a notch head that you can place on prismarine and block of quartz. So if I were in adventure mode, um, I can't place it on this purple block here, you'll notice I don't even see a hitbox, but I can place it on the quartz or prismarine, because again, you see hitboxes there. Um, so that in a nutshell is a uh, replace item. If you want to go ahead and s learn more about the different tags in replacing items, I will leave a link down below to a Minecraft forum post with some of them. It is kind of confusing, and honestly, it's yeah, it's not super easy to find them out. But, but you know, it's something where you just kind of want to look up exactly what you need because otherwise, it's kind of confusing to find all of them. But um, yeah, so that is actually replace item in a nutshell. And next we have XP. So we're gonna give ourselves here a command block again, and clear chat. So XP is a really helpful command. Um if you want to go ahead and put an enchanting system into your uh, map. So I'm going to give myself a couple of diamond swords here and just kind of explain to you what I mean. Oh, and I need some lapis because uh, one, because we're past, I want to say it was 1.8. Anyways, uh, I can't keep that in there. Okay, so currently you'll notice I have no, I, I have one experience. So the first thing we should do is let's figure out how to get rid of that experience. So the XP command works pretty simply. Um, you do XP, then the amount, then the player. Now, amount works in two different ways. Amount levels or amount uh, XP points. Now, I would recommend levels, but I'm going to explain to you right now what these are. So, first off, XP amount uh, is basically experience points. And this is a bit tricky because you don't... Sorry about that, guys. My recording just crashed. Anyways, what I was saying is that when you don't use L, it's very confusing because you don't really know exactly how much you're going to be adding or moving. So this is where the L tag comes in. So if I get myself 55 levels, you'll notice it gives me exactly 55 levels. If I get myself one more level right now, you notice that I'm at 70. And if I want to remove all 70 levels, uh, I can remove 70 by just doing negative 70. But you'll notice I still keep that tiny fraction of level I had from before, so I would have wanted to do 71. So this is helpful. Say, for example, you want your player to get a level 30 enchant and only exactly 30 levels. So you could literally just go into the command block and go uh, XP 30L at P. And then as soon as it's triggered by the player, they'll get exactly 30 levels, but no more than that. So then you notice, of course, I have 30 levels. I do my enchanting, whatever. Obviously, this is not a 30 level enchantment table, but I think you get the point. And this is also just super helpful for map making, map making um, because you don't want to be giving players enchantment bottles. Because enchantment bottles, just you don't know exactly how many levels you'll get, and it's just kind of not as easy to do. So I would recommend definitely using slash XP. Alright, so the next command we are going to be going over is world border. 
and world border is something that is uh, that was added i want to say 1.8 and world border is actually a really really cool command um and in this case we're actually going to be using the chat window just because we're gonna have to be typing in a lot of commands so we're gonna be making it a bit easier on ourselves and you know just for the fun of it we're gonna set it to nighttime as well all right so let me clear my chat here um there we go and now we could go ahead and check out slash world border all right so first off world border center so by the way you'll understand what world border is in just a minute but let's set the world border center one second guys okay sorry about that as i was saying we're going to be going over world border center first and uh you'll notice it requires x and a z so world border is essentially a world border so it means that it will be a boundary around that you cannot get past all right so world border center and instead of typing in x and z coordinates which you know for in this, my case would be eight and eight i could just press tilde tilde uh, or the squiggly key right here also for some reason called grave um and you'll notice there we go now my world border center is actually set to 8.5 8.5 because apparently that's that's what i'm on and yeah so now that the world border is possible, unless we still don't see anything, maybe like, well, why don't we see anything? Well, we never really set the world border. Currently, the world border is many, many blocks uh, far out. So we're going to set it to, let's just set it to one, just as an example. And you'll notice here, <laughs> I am now trapped in a one block world border. And part of the reason I set it tonight is, as you could tell, it looks really dang cool. Um, actually, you know what? Let me do time set. I think, yeah, there we go. Now you can see it even better. And yeah, you'll notice you can't go past this world border. It'll trap you, even if you're in creative mode. Um, set to 2, 3, and it uses a radius. So say I were to set the world border to 10. Um, actually, let's set it to around 25. Um, so now we're just stuck on our main island area, basically. And by the way, if you even were to go ahead and say, try and get out of here in any way, and then go back, um, y things will start to glitch out a little bit, and you... Uh, you can come back in, but then you can't go back out again. But if you're in survival mode, um, if the world border is configured a certain way, it'll just instantly kill you. So I wouldn't recommend doing a lot of experiments with the world border in survival mode. Alright, so world border set, obviously, we figured out. Um, you could also go ahead and get, so you could see exactly how wide it is. You could add uh, blocks to it. So say, for example, I wanted to expand by 10 blocks within th 3 seconds to three and there we go but i could also i want actually i'm wondering actually there we go and you could do negative if you want to shrink it but what's interesting then is say i were to go at set you could also set it in a certain amount of seconds say we were to do world border we're set 100 and now what we're going to do is we're going to head right here and we're going to go world border set one in 10 seconds and watch this ready you will see that the world border will all of a sudden start to shrink in and it kind of gets this really cool fading effect and you could get players to almost ru have to run from the world border which just kind of adds a whole fun aspect to it um that i think is just really enjoyable and fun <laughs> um and yeah as you could tell you could create some pretty interesting things but the reason this is helpful is see you're a map maker and you don't want people going outside of a certain area you could really easily configure that this way rather than using things like teleport so along with set and center, and actually I'm going to set it again to uh, 25, you also have damage and warning. So for, we're going to go over warning first. So warning is basically um, how um, how close you are to it versus how red your screen gets. So your warning works. It means that if you're right next to it, your screen will turn red. So say, for example, I were to go to distance, uh, world border warning, distance, 1. So now, if I were one block away and in survival mode, it would. Let's actually set it to ten though, and this will be a good way to I think to kind of show it off, because you'll notice here. Uh, um, and I'm not sure why I'm not really getting much of a warning. Let me see here. Maybe it's because I need to add damage to it. But let's see. Yeah, you'll notice I'm not actually getting a warning yet. But we're also going to set time, so like how long, you, how close you are to it. We're just going to set it to 10 seconds, so once it's uh, 10 seconds away from you, it'll do that. And wow, I keep shrinking it. Alright, so damage. Um, we'll actually go ahead and change the amount of damage you'll take if you try and go past it. So, if I were to set the amount to 10, for example. So now, for every 10 blocks, you are away f 
er, for every block you are away from it, you will take 10 damage. Um, which is obviously pretty deadly um, if you aren't careful. Um, and you can also do world border uh, damage buffer. And what damage buffer is, again, it'll basically... Uh, I'm pretty sure it's how many bl how many blocks it requires before you'll start taking damage. But obviously, you can't even get past the world border, so yeah. Um, anyways, I'm not sure why, war why warning isn't working. I'm trying to think. Probably missing something. Um, but the way warning's supposed to work, if I remember correctly, it basically means if you are going to get close to the world border, uh, your screen will turn red. And let me actually see here. If I... In survival mode. Yeah, you'll notice because I was next to it, I suffocated in a wall. So you can't escape the world border. And yeah, again, sorry, I'm, I don't know everything about world border. And it's it's been a couple of game versions since I've tackled it. But it is, again, a really helpful map making tool and actually will be kind of fun. So let me head into survival mode here. And do slash world border. Um, set uh, one. And we're going to give it 60 seconds. So you could also make, like, uh, oh, and by the way, I should mention this goes up to world limits, so you can't get out of it in any way. Um, oh, and I think actually warning might be with this, where it actually, depending on how close it is to you, it'll give you a warning. And actually, you know what? I think it was actually a sound warning. Let's see. So if I remember correctly, it'll actually give you a sound warning. But anyways, here, you'll notice in just a second, once the world war gets far enough from me, I start taking a ton of damage, so you have to stay in the world border um, so that you don't take damage. But you'll also notice, while the world border is moving, you could still escape from the world border, but obviously, because I've said damage, um, yeah, I can, uh, I can die quite quickly. <laughs> so actually, let me go ahead and world border, set, and we're going to just set a ton of blocks away so that we don't have to deal with the world border ever again in this series, because... Obviously, if someone were to come on, then I could have some delicious things happening, and we don't want that. Alright, so we have covered Replace Item XP and World Border, and if you have any suggestions for the next episode, just let me know down in the comment section below. Again, thank you for 92 subscribers. By the time this video is out, it'll most likely be uh, like 97-ish, if not even 100, and that's just crazy to think about because, guys, uh, it's only been a couple weeks since I've gotten to 100 or 50, not 100, and it's just kind of ridiculous, so yeah, I, I don't know honestly what I'll do for a special, but I'll probably release another video asking you guys what to do, um, because I'll have no idea what to do, and this channel is just growing really, really fast, I mean, I've had this channel for like four years now, and it just kind of started to grow this last year, but yeah, guys, I hope you have enjoyed, again, thanks for watching, bye!